Now, few people expect a major breakthrough at the United Nations Climate Change Conference taking place in Copenhagen, but on the ground across the world, it's a different story. Some 250 climate change regulations were actually put into place over the past year. Renewable energy investments are seen climbing to a record $200 billion next year. So for more on the clean energy boom, we turn to our guest, Michael Liebreich. He is CEO at New Energy Finance, a consulting firm, and he joins me now live from London. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Let's start Good with the fact morning, that the, let's start with the fact that the UN climate change talks produced an agreement that CO2 carbon dioxide is now a harmful pollutant. What does this mean for the alternative energy industry? Well, I think you've got to see it in the context of those uh, 250 pieces of legislation that have been passed in the past year, uh, 700 pieces of legislation worldwide in the past four years. Uh, and so there's this steady drip, drip, drip of new regulation that is promoting renewable energy uh, or energy efficiency and is sort of tilting the playing field back away from fossil fuels. Now, the EPA has stepped in um, in order to unblock the logjam uh, where legislation in the U.S. is stuck in Senate at the moment. But it's got to be there is this steady drip of, uh, of regulation that's driving in the direction uh, of clean energy. So it sounds like the EPA is catching up with what's been going on on the ground already. Well, yes, I think that's right. Yeah, and, and, and the EPA announcement is also very significant. I mean, it clearly signals uh, to the Senate that this stuff is going to, this is the trend of history, this is the flow of uh, the direction that history is moving. It's also very important in the signal that it sends to the delegates um, in Copenhagen about how seriously uh, the U.S. will be taking its responsibilities. And that would be good news, right, because the EU has, on opening day, accused the U.S. and China of not doing enough when it comes to cleaning up, uh, cleaning up its energy investments. But this is a big negotiation. Everybody's going to be accusing everybody else of not pulling their weight and so on. That's not the, the issue is really, uh, you know, what are, we, what are we expecting to come out of Copenhagen or the process going forwards from Copenhagen? Now, we do have two weeks of climate change talks in Copenhagen. You have said in the past that you don't expect to see a broad sweeping document at the end of all this. If we're not going to get a sweeping mandate, what will we see then? Well, there's going to be a. It, it, it's all carefully choreographed, pretty much, uh, you know, from here on in. We're not going to see a legally binding document with new mechanisms that govern the transfer of very large amounts of money from this country to that country and so on. What we're going to see is, is directional commitments um, that will escalate through the next two weeks and terminate with some sort of document that can all be signed and so on. But. We're looking at something that will look much more like the output of a G8 summit or a G20 or the Bali process, which the, which the, you know, the climate community got uh, was one of the road marks on, on the way to Copenhagen. What would you consider a success? What, does that define success for you then? <laughs> a success would be that that choreography works, that we start with this EPA announcement pretty much on day one or day two, uh, and that it, that it builds to a crescendo of commitments from the different um, countries, uh, and that that terminates in some sort of um, uh, document or, 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 or a joint communique at the end uh, that, that nobody throws their toys out of the, pl at the pram, so that we get that, that political framework and then the process continue. We are going to be negotiating uh, on climate for the next 50 years. This is really just a waypoint. Now, very quickly here, uh, you've mentioned in the past that investment in clean energy has rebounded, but we're still below the peak 2008 levels. When do you see it going back to the 2008 levels? Oh, next year will be, 2010 is going to be a, a record for investment in, uh, in clean energy. Uh, that's already pretty clear. In 2008, there was 150 billion invested in clean energy worldwide, renewable energy, energy efficiency, carbon capture and sequestration and so on. Uh, that dropped this year, particularly because of the crisis. So the first couple of quarters of the year were very bad for investment levels. We've already seen those come bouncing back. And in fact, um, you know, you've got companies like GE that have just done their first uh, deal that doesn't just use stimulus money, that it actually uses the normal um, support mechanisms for wind, right. uh, for wind energy. Um, it is already bouncing back, and it's going to bounce back further uh, next year. Okay, thank you. We've been speaking with Michael Liebreich, CEO at New Energy Finance in London.